So how does your muscle grow? All right, so you go to the gym, you're following an individualized structured training plan. You're following and being consistent with an individualized nutrition plan. You're making sure that your recovery, yeah, it's on point. And as a result, you're growing. But today, let's take a little deeper look. At this point, all the scientific research and literature is pointing to about three or four different mechanisms that are responsible for muscle growth. We're gonna have a look at each of these. Now when you train, you often get a swelling effect within the muscle cells themselves. Now your body, your muscles, identify that swelling as a threat. And in response to that threat, your body takes on physiological processes that respond with actual muscle growth. So what training methods can you use to bring about or enhance that muscle swelling effect? First of all, training in high enough repetition ranges with limited rest periods. Using altered range of movements to ensure that metabolic byproducts and blood flow is restricted within the actual muscle group. And intensifier techniques such as drop sets and supersets yeah, they can be useful if used correctly. Now, while the previous mechanism that we just discussed, muscle cell swelling, is great, it's not as powerful as the mechanism known as mechanical tension. Mechanical tension is basically the tension that is placed on your working targeted muscle group via an external load, i.e. the load or the weights that you're using on your barbells or your dumbbells. The heavier weight that you're able to use, the greater the mechanical tension is present within the targeted muscle group. Now the more mechanical tension that is present within a targeted muscle group, the more potential for muscle growth is generated. Now, you may have heard that we have slow twitch muscle fibers, which are great for endurance. Then we have fast twitch muscle fibers, and these are easier to trigger muscle growth through. And it's these fast twitch muscle fibers that get recruited with heavy loads. Now, in no way am I talking about powerlifting in any regard. I'm still talking about repetition ranges in that approximate six to 10 mark. But I am talking about structured training here with approximately two to three minutes rest between these working sets to allow as much recovery as possible to make maximal lifting heavy working sets possible. Now you've probably heard by now that when you train you cause tiny microscopic tears or abrasions within the muscle fibers themselves. And this in turn triggers during the recovery period for the muscle to repair larger. Now this is true, but it's not the only way to train for growth. It just happens to be the one that we, we live vividly as it's the one that contributes most to delayed onset muscle soreness days after. Muscle damage occurs in a number of ways. One of them being when we are concentrating on the eccentric portion of the reps, when we are forcing the muscle to lengthen with a slowed tempo speed or using techniques that allow us to lift heavier during that portion of each rep. It also occurs when we train beyond the point of failure. Having a spot that can help you pass that point of contractile failure or using certain techniques that allow you to go beyond the point of failure on your own. Now warning, training to the point of past failure is very, very effective, but like anything, can be overused. We should always use it as one of the tools that we use in a balanced approach or a balanced training protocol. Treat it with respect and you'll maximize the effects that you can get from it. Everyone knows that burning sensation you get when you're training, where the burning, the lactic acid is just building up in the targeted muscle so much that you get to a point where the burning sensation will not allow you to contract the muscle anymore. That's metabolic stress. That is lactic acid pooling within the targeted muscle. One study actually took a very novel approach. It took muscle cells and it dumped them in lactic acid. How did it respond? The muscle cells themselves actually responded by growing. The mechanism that actually causes and brings about that burning sensation can actually make muscle grow. To take advantage of metabolic stress as a mechanism for growth, I'll ensure that rest periods are generally shorter 
to ensure that metabolic byproducts don't have a chance to leave the muscle group between working sets as well as using certain intensifiers to enhance the metabolic byproduct buildup. This is where a quality pre-workout will come in handy to help fight off fatigue of lactic acid, allowing you to push through these reps even more. On a pump day focused workout, they are definitely gonna give you an advantage. Now you might hear in the gym some guys saying, oh, this rep range is the best. This tempo speed is the best. Rest this long only between sets. And this training method is the best. The thing is those points or methods that are being pointed out as the best might only be taking advantage of say one of those growth mechanisms to get the most out of your training and have your body responding in the most effective and fast manner possible I believe in not limiting yourself to just one tool or one mechanism. Imagine you've got a toolbox and all you use from that toolbox is the hammer. When you could be using another tool that is better suited for the task at hand. Don't limit yourself. Use your full toolbox at your disposal.